This is from Drums and Drumming. Uh, Uriah Heep and Mountain are his other two favourite bands along with DP. Did we work with them? We've worked with Uriah many times uh, over the decades. We've uh, collaborate on, collaborated on quite a few tours. Mountain, no, we never play with Mountain, but uh, good pals, you know. Uh, Corky, fabulous drummer, did some ridiculously, gloriously simple things, but made them sound exactly perfectly right. And uh, Leslie West, I mean, what a rock and rock and roll voice, and what a guitar sound. Uh, we loved Mountain. We thought they were great. David Carini. What advice can I give musicians today? Oh, God. Just don't expect anything from your music other than to enjoy it. Surely that's why you pick up an instrument in the first place, you know, why you strum a guitar, play a piano, or bang a drum kit. It makes you happy. If something else happens along the way and it becomes more than just a hobby, Embrace it, respect it, but God say, don't expect it. If it comes along, it'll come along because you've earned it, and that comes along because you believe in what you're doing. If you don't believe it, the chances are it won't come along. Just enjoy it. This is from Owen Durkin. It's about moving up to bigger drum kits. Do you have to acclimatize as he puts it well no um, you have to be comfortable with a bigger kit you know uh, if you like the sound of a big bass drum then get one but understand it's a little harder to play than a small bass drum its reaction time is slower it, it, the pedal won't come back off the uh, the head as quickly as it will off a small bass drum so you adjust the technique you use on that. Uh, and with a big bass drum, of course, if you're not a particularly tall guy, that can be a problem too, because you end up sitting so high to accommodate any of your toms over the top of the bass drum. It sort of gets out of control. So you have to work, work to your own physical limitations. A 26 is probably as big as I could get. I uh, I tried a 28 once and it sounded lovely. I mean, I don't know I don't know how good it would be, but it sounded lovely to my ear. But by the time I tried to put a rack tom on, it was coming up here. I, I, you know, it gets the point. You can't you can't play it. So 24s and 26s, you really don't need to get any bigger than that. You won't you won't achieve much. So be comfy. If it feels comfortable with a bigger with a bigger a higher kit. Cool. If it doesn't, don't waste your time. This is from Ruby Tuesday. Who is the Italian guy that owns Cozy Pal's red drum kit? Well, I'd have to ask him whether he minds me telling you. If he doesn't, I'll try and let you know. Uh, this one's from Mitch again. Uh, you notice on one of my drum kits that there are Two splash cymbals uh, mounted on one stand, little eight or ten inch cymbals. Why is that? Do you know why? Because my drum kit, drum tech got bored and decided he put two cymbals up instead of one. None to do with me at all. And as I only hit the thing two or three times in the show, yeah, if it kept him happy, I'm good with it. Uh, Dome Vavant uh, sent in this question. Uh, it'd be nice to see my drum kits that I have here and uh, I will take a couple of cameras into the room and uh, show you what I have. I don't have a lot of the old drum kits. Uh, they sort of get lost, broken, just wear out. Uh, or I give them away. But I'll show you what I have here. There's three or four interesting kits. That'll happen sometime soon. This is from Stefan Hawk. Do I do any recordings from my studio at home? 
for other people. Well, yes, I do. But uh, not everything, not always. And unlike this, that costs you money. This is from Cor Malank. What's my take on electronic drums and the way modern drumming is gone? Uh, I have a couple of electronic drum kits and they're wonderful tools. Uh, and if I'm asked to do something in my studio <coughs> for somebody else and I really don't have time to set up one of my kits and spend two or three hours getting the sound worked out, then occasionally I will use one of the, the electronic kits. Uh, I can tailor the sound immediately for what is required for the track. Usually it's it doesn't require a great deal of virtuosity. It just needs it to feel right and sound right. So uh, yes, I do that sometime, but when I have the time to get my acoustic kit sorted out with a sound I like, then I would always choose that, choose that for a, a professional piece of recording, purely because I play it differently. No matter how good the responsive responses on these um, these pads, and some of them are brilliant, mentally, I'm in a different place on an acoustic kit. Uh, you can't throw away fifty odd years of playing one way immediately. You know, I like the electronic drums for the uh, the flexibility and the immediacy. But uh, I, I like my old drums. From Zolt Bagji, I think I said it right. How do we handle the jet lag? Um, well, nobody really does, do they? You know, your body says it's time to go to sleep or your body says it's time to wake up, regardless of uh, what the clock says when you've gone a third of the way or halfway around the world. Um, you just have to deal with it. The worst thing is getting off a plane, say for 10, 11 hours. And so you've maybe gone through an eight hour time change and having nothing to do for three days. Because all that happens is when you get tired, you go to bed and you go to sleep immediately, but you wake up at five in the morning with nothing to do. And the next night it happens the same again. But if you go there maybe a day before you meant to work, you are psychologically ordered to, to be awake at a time you would normally be in bed or waking up because you've got to do the work. Um, it's still hard to get over, but it takes what would be a seven or eight day process and condenses it, in my case, down to two or three days. And then I'm more or less normal. Yeah. So sitting around with nothing to do with, it, with jet lag. You just stay. You just stay jet lagged. No. This is from Vast Dim. Would DP consider doing uh, an acoustic live recording? No. That's not what we do. That's like asking Johnny Mitchell to do a heavy metal set. <laughs> no, you know, purple's thing is purple's thing, and uh, acoustic stuff isn't really it. I mean, we can do some pretty quiet, gentle stuff, but that's not our bag. Okay, this last one is from Tinted Moon. Do I use a click track on stage? No. Uh, in the studio, yes. Uh, it's very, very difficult to get your head around the fact that you have to treat the click as your friend because the first thing you want to do is treat it as your enemy. It does take away a lot of freedom. Uh, but I've never recorded a piece of music where we've had to do maybe 20 takes that's ever sounded any good. Um, if, you, if you're not going to get it in the first three, four takes that day, you're probably not going to get it. Well, you get it. You get it perfect, but it won't be right. Um, 
what a click track does in the studio where you are in an artificial situation. You're not playing for people. You're playing for this unforgiving machine. Um, you can get a, a take done now. And if there's two bars where you messed up, because it's all so perfectly in time, you can go in and you can replace those two bars. You can do it another four or five times till you've got it the way exactly where you like it. So you just have to just start thinking in a different way. But on stage, no, no, no. On stage, absolute freedom, and you're 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 all in the in you're on the wave together, the band. And if the tempo moves a little bit, that's okay, you know, as long as it doesn't go like gallop away. It's like, it is like a wave, and so long as everybody's riding the wave at the same time, those little differences, nobody knows. It just feels right. I mean, you can play a very simple song and you're holding the verse like that, but when the middle eight comes, that's meant to kick a little bit. And on stage, you can do that automatically. And when you finish that, you can pull back into the verse again. With a click track, you can't do that quite so obviously. You, there are, there's nanoseconds you can move ahead or behind the click, so it's still in with it to give the impression of it. And that, that in itself is another art you have to learn. Uh, but I go back. On, on stage, no. Boss. Timekeeper. Me. Okay, that's going to be it this time. There's a few I haven't done here, but uh, they're either questions that I don't think have any real interest other than for the person who's written it, or I've sort of answered them before on different things. Anyway, have fun. Hope you keep watching. And we'll keep trying to find uh, more stuff for you to uh, enjoy. Okay, bye.